Welcome. Welcome to Kitchen 143. I am your host, Michelle Aventajado, and I am so excited to share some of the things that I love while we spend time together here in the kitchen. This week, we will be learning all about whiskey. We're going to decode whiskey. We're going to learn how to taste it. And of course, we're going to learn how to pair it with some of our favorite Filipino foods. Unpacking this today with me, we have special guests. Drambox founder and Scotch Malt Whiskey Society and single cast liaison Chris Ong, TV host Pia Guanyo, and of course, coming in a bit later in the show, we have bar and beverage innovator Kath Eckstein. So make sure, of course, you watch for our giveaways because you, as always, you know that we have fun things for you to taste and win and take home just as we are tasting them here too. So as you answer the quiz, the cook questions, you will have the opportunity to win a Dram Box tasting set. You'll have the opportunity to win Lechoneria Lechon Belly, which is super yummy. It's our favorite. And of course, some dark chocolate to go along with what we will be sending. So remember that while we are here and this is live, we'd love to see where you're signing on from, where you're watching, what your favorite whiskey is. Tell us about you guys. And of course, make sure to leave comments or questions if you have them for our whiskey expert, expert or even for Pia, myself, and Kath. So, okay, let's start things off with um, Pia and Chris. We'll welcome them to the screen. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi, Michelle. Hi, Hi Chris. Hi, Pia. So glad you could join me here as we learn. So, Chris, you're the expert today. Pia and I will learn all from your, um, your educate, you will educate us on whiskey and you'll educate the viewers too, because sometimes whiskey can be a little intimidating and we don't want to do that today. We want to show everybody that it could be a drink for everyone. So guys, why don't we start off by sharing what, what's your favorite way to drink whiskey or perhaps even what your favorite whiskey is? Oh, so, well, thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Pia. Nice to be with you this afternoon. Uh, as far as my favorite way to drink whiskey, I always drink it neat. The reason mm -hmm. being is because I drink whiskey the way I cook. I like to taste all the flavors, all the complexities that whiskey has, and that's why I prefer to drink it neat. And then after that, I'll either add some water or some ice if it's a hot day, and we'll go from there. You know, but preferably if you're first, if it's your first time trying a, a whiskey that you've never had before. It's the best way to try it. Right, that way we can taste it. Pia, how about you? Well, for me, it all depends. If it's a good brand whiskey, um, I like to drink it neat as well because I like to really taste everything just like um, Chris does. But if it's not so good, like um, I don't know how to dis uh, how to define that exactly. But if someone tells me it's not really like good quality or thing, has to drink it with some ice just mm -hmm. so you get a bad hangover. <laughs> but <Right. laughs> um, yes, definitely could have it my way. Right. Okay. So um, for me, I guess I'm odd man out. I like to drink mine on the rocks, but I know Nino is always also telling me to drink it neat as well. My dad drinks it neat. Nino drinks it neat. Um, so I like that I can share that love of whiskey with them. But Chris, can you tell us what separates whiskey from other spirits? Well, Going back to what you were saying earlier, Michelle, as far as whiskey being an intimidating thing, uh, I, I'm here to kind of challenge that belief and to kind of break away from that belief because in reality, whiskey is is really meant for everyone. It's no, We're gone past the days where whiskey was known as like your grandfather or your father's drink, right? It's it's yeah. actually known for everyone now. There's, there's a whiskey that's out there for every single palate that everyone has, but Essentially, what differentiates whiskey from other spirits is 
there's only three ingredients that are, are used to create whiskey, and that's barley, right. yeast, and water, right? So that's it's it. vegan, it's, it's, it's low fat, it's, it's keto, as, uh, as we were talking about yesterday. So it's, yes. it's a welcoming drink. And, um, and when it comes to someone being intimidated, let's say you go to a bar and you're not familiar, you're, you see all these bottles on there and then you're, 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 to, you're saying to yourself, man, I, I feel like trying a whiskey, but I'm a little intimidated. The best right. person to talk to is the bartender because okay. the bartender at every establishment should be able to influence and help someone kind of like ask what their flavor palette is, what do they like? And then they should be able to recommend a whiskey based on their flavor profile. Yes, so there's a reason why we have our favorite bartenders, Chris, because they also know our palate too. Absolutely. Um, okay, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Now there is two ways to spell whiskey, one without an E and one with. What differentiates these two types of spellings? And, and um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the origins of whiskey as well. Okay, sure, Michelle. Well, in order for me to explain the E and the no E, let's go to the origins mm -hmm. of whiskey, right? So Perfect. whiskey was created by monks, okay? Monks created the process of distillation and then brought that science to Ireland and then to Scotland in around 11 to 1300, you know, way, way back in the day. So uh, along with that, it was created originally as a medicine as an analgesic and an ah. anesthetic, okay? Remember, back in those days, if you, if you got a cough, most of the time, you didn't have much longer left, <laughs> okay? Uh, if you caught a cold, <laughs> you know, it's like there's yeah. not much time that's gonna happen, right? Uh, let alone if you get cut, if you get a cut and it gets infected, that's usually wow. the loss of the limb. So whiskey was created to kind of help disinfect, help treat some of those ailments. Okay, so wow. the difference between the spelling of whiskey without the E and whiskey with the E basically comes down to two countries, Scotland and Ireland. Now, Scotland, Ireland actually, there's a lot of debate, but I feel that Ireland was actually the first people that learned how to distill and create whiskey. And then those monks brought it over to Scotland right after. But essentially, Scotland became the world known for their whiskey. And because Ireland said, hey, guys, we have whiskey, too. We need to find a way to differentiate us. And it goes to the term uskiba. Uskiba or uskibeha is essentially what is known as translates to the water of life. OK, and that's in Scottish and Irish Gaelic. So they took that term and then so the uskibeha actually has an extra E. So the Irish, the Irish people said, hey, listen, if we have, if we can translate this with our with our spelling with the e, that what that's also a way to differentiate our whiskey from Scottish whiskey. Now, when Ireland Irish immigrants went to America, they brought with them their food, their drink, and as well as the spelling of whiskey. So American whiskey is spelled with the e as well. And while Japanese whiskey does not have it, because Japan actually learned how to make whiskey from Scotland. They sent someone to mm -hmm. Scotland in around 1920 or so to basically mm -hmm. learn how to make whiskey. And then he brought back the spelling of whiskey without the E. So there you go. E is for Scotland or E is for Ireland. Without the E is for Scotland. Okay, super simple. So I love how when you say Scotland and Ireland, your accent comes out, Scotland. So that is that why they say it's also Scotch whiskey because of Scotland influence? I'm just, I, I feel like that, is that related? Absolutely, Michelle, great point. When you talk about Scotch, it's essentially whiskey that's produced in Scotland. Now, there are certain rules that they have when it comes to Scotch right. whiskey. Number one, it has to be obviously made completely, bottled completely in Scotland. It has there to be aged for a minimum of three years. And on top of that, it has to go in at the minimum of 40% alcohol level. So anything below 40%, it cannot be considered scotch. So that's what they call the 40% ABV, alcohol by volume? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. See, I've been doing a little homework too. P, did you know all of this as well? Like I've 
every episode when we dive into something, I end up going down this rabbit hole because I want to learn about it too. And of course, I want to share it with all the viewers. Um, I just know that there are certain brands I like a lot more than others. Um, I also know uh, that I don't like peaty whiskeys. I'm, I'm sorry, my husband cringes oh, no. every time I say that. Yes. You like PD, oh, that, Yeah, that's the first thing I look for whenever we order a drink. If there's an, is it Isla, Chris? If yeah. there's yes, an Isla um, whiskey, good pronunciation. Too. I go for that right away. Yeah. Oh, good. Thanks. See? Yes. We're so, so well I learned I think to remember because that is and um I even remember some um particular brand so that whenever I'm wherever I am I know how to order what I like. Yes. So that's good. We both do. And I see that we have lots. So guys, I just want to read some of our comments because we have here people favored Japanese. Russell Patina, Japanese whiskeys are in a league of their own. So he prefers Japanese, not Scottish or Irish. Um, okay. And oh, guys, yes, reminder um, that if you're paying attention, because we've been giving you so much information, you will have the chance to take home your own tasting kit and replicate what we are tasting today with your own dram box. Um, okay, Chris, before we go on, uh, we talked about the ingredients, we talked about the, the kinds, we talked about um, what the classifications or the dif different things needed for each whiskey to be called a whiskey. How about the process? How is whiskey made? Okay, so that's a very good question, Michelle. And essentially, it's six simple steps. First thing, we have malting, which is where we take the barley and we put it into water for about 48 to 72 hours. That essentially lets the barley grow a little bit, which will help produce some of the starches that will be once then converted into sugar. So after the malting, the second process will be the mash. Now, what the mash is, is basically where they take the malted barley, they add water, and they add yeast. Now, what happens there is that the yeast will eventually eat those sugars and produce right. alcohol, okay? After that, then you have this uh, fermentation. That's where, that's where right. that process happens. So you have the malting of the barley, then you have the mashing, mm -hmm. which is basically mm -hmm. grinding that barley down, and then you have the fermentation where you add water and you add yeast and basically you're you're letting all that magic happen and then you have distillation now distillation is basically where you heat that that water up that mash what we call we like to call mash you heat it up and then you produce those vapors that will essentially become will turn back into liquid that will become alcohol right so Right. In Scottish whiskey, they do it, a, a lot of whiskey distilleries will do it twice. Some will actually do it three times. Uh, Irish whiskey in particular, a lot of them do it three times right off the bat. So after that distillation happens, it is then you take that pure, basically it's a, it's a clear liquid. It looks like water. It's a clear liquid. It's a clear liquid. And then you put that into these casts, those big round wooden barrels. And that is what's known as maturation, or as the mm. wisdom people call it, the long sleep, okay? The now, long sleep. Yes, the long sleep, where most of the time they age it for, as, as I said earlier, it's a minimum of three years to be called scotch, but obviously they age it for anywhere from eight to 10 to 12 to sometimes 20 years. And then the mm. final process is obviously you take it from the barrel, you filter it, then you put it right through a bottle, and which is called bottling. So those are the six steps of whiskey. Pretty, pretty simple. Very simple. Um, just as simple as the three ingredients, right? So um, really fantastic. Okay, so I want to read some of our comments before we read 
quiz the cook questions for everybody. Now you guys know we need you to stay in Metro Manila so we could deliver our prizes to you. Reminding everyone that we have a big lechoneria, lechon belly going out for everyone and a, a single malt um, dram box tasting kit going out to everyone as well, which will have your dark chocolate in there. So I wanna say hello because we do have some questions, Chris. Um, there was a question uh, about single malt. Let's see, where was that? It said, what was the, I think it was just something about what was the difference between single malt and blended? Okay, that's a, that's a great question to whoever asked that. So a single malt, people sometimes get a little bit confused, but the definition of a single malt is whiskey, malt whiskey that is created from a single oh, yeah, distillery. That's, that's basically what it means, all right? And um, when it comes to a blended whiskey, a blended whiskey means exactly what it says. So you, they take maybe two or three different single malt or single grains, and then they bring that together and then they create blended whiskey. So Michelle, there are actually about five different types of whiskey. Okay, and I could okay. go right through, I could go through those really quickly. We have Great. number one, blended whiskey, which is the most bought and uh, highly purchased type of whiskey that's out there. It's actually used. blended whiskey, not single malts. Then you mm -hmm. have the single malt. After the mm -hmm. single malt, you have the single grain, which is basically the difference between the single malt and the single grain is single malt means only malted barley. Single grain is any type of other grain. So you can use sorghum, ah. you, can use wheat, you can use corn. Then after that, you have American whiskey or what they some would call bourbon, right? So you, mm -hmm. have, you have that as a different category as well. And then you have a what they call as a blended malt. Now, a blended malt is basically a combination of two or three single malts. So there's a difference between mm -hmm. a blended whiskey and a blended malt. A blended whiskey ah. is a single malt and a single grain while a blended malt is only single malts. Super, okay, so thank you. I was taking notes while you were talking <laughs> because I also wanna be sure I'm ready for the questions, but okay. Um, are you guys ready for a quiz the cook question? So let's remind everybody again, that you need to stay within Metro Manila to receive your lechoneria, lechon belly. Um, you need to also um, be 18 years and older. <laughs> so that's another one. We are sending whiskey out, guys. So you have to be 18 years and older. You have to be able to drink. And of course, the first person who is going to have lightning fingers, I know that there are some people who are here. I see some regular viewers who love to, to answer and compete. Um, guys, we have six prizes this week. So you have extra chances to win your whiskey tasting kit. Are you ready for our quiz the cook question? The first one is, what is the difference between whiskey without an E and whiskey with an E? Okay. I just wanna make some shout outs while everybody is saying hello um, and answering these quiz the cook questions. I see some of my Be Fit ladies. Hi guys, I see you're tuning in. Hi Pepper and Pepsi and also Metal. Thanks for watching. I know Metal is a whiskey drinker, so she's really, um, I'm sure she's gonna compete too. Let's see, Pepper also says Irish whiskey for her. Okay, oh, Chris, before we look at any of the answers, Russell Patino, Patina, is asking, is single malt really superior? I always feel as if that's a kind of a someone's own preference. I have tried blended whiskeys out there that are fantastic, and, and there are a ton out there. Do I think that single malts are superior? I think that they're easier to kind of, if you try a single malt that's not good, it's easier to say, hey, you know, that distillery didn't do a great job. But um, right. I, I feel as if it comes down to the blender and the, and the preference, the consumer's preference. If you enjoy a certain flavor, I know people that buy 
blended whiskeys that are in the thousands of dollars as well. So, you know, wow. <laughs> yeah, there's, there are expensive blended whiskeys out there. It's not just single malts. So uh, I, I don't think that's a true, I don't think that's correct. I don't think that single malts are superior. It really comes down to someone's preference. I agree with you because I do think it does come down to preference whenever, I mean, with everything, whether it's the food or the drink that we prefer. Um, okay, I am going to check with the council and see. Uh, it looks like... Okay, we have a winner. Yay! Great, okay, let's see. I love this part. This part is always filled with so much suspense. And I know even the viewers are, are tuning in and they're like, at the edge of their keyboard and their seat, right? Because I know I would be. I'm pretty competitive. Pete, are you competitive when it comes stuff to stuff like this? Especially when it entails winning some free stuff. <laughs> oh, and whiskey, no less. And lechon, lechon. Who doesn't love lechon, no? Okay. Um, I think we have a winner. Um, I believe it's RQ Chua. Hi, my friend. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for having lightning fingers. Someone from the prod team will be messaging you to make sure you get, we get your delivery details for your prize. Congratulations. Congratulations, RQ. Okay. I'm so excited. Guys, do you want to do another one back to back? We'll do a quiz the cook question two right now because I know Chris and I gave you guys so much. Well, Chris gave the information. I just asked some questions and Pia also, no? So what are, are you ready? The three ingredients included in whiskey. What is needed to make whiskey? Super simple. Do, 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 do. <laughs> So this is my favorite part, but this is also, of course, um, Pete, you said that you liked the peatier whiskeys. So I yes. feel like you and Nino could sit down and enjoy something together. Does Steve like them peatier also, or does he like them um, not necessarily from Isla? Actually, he doesn't. Um, tends to doesn't. give that side to me. Um, but he, what kind of whiskeys do you like? Come here. The talk of whiskey brought <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Steve. But, Nino's here too. <laughs> what kind of whiskey do you prefer? I, I like single malt and blended. Yeah. Single and, and blended then. Is, is there like a certain characteristic to, let's say, Japanese that um, Irish whiskeys have? <laughs> Scottish whiskeys don't have. Could you tell, like, which is Scottish or Irish or Japanese just by tasting them? If you Good bring question. in, if you bring a so-called whiskey expert to a bar and have a blind tasting of, you know, an Irish, a Scottish, or a Japanese whiskey without telling them, ninety-nine percent of the time they won't be able to tell. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't care if somebody really tells you that they're so good that they can tell everything. It, it's really difficult. As I said, whiskey, you, when it comes down to it, they're made out of those three ingredients, right? And right. the only don't thing say them. Don't them, say them. Not, they're still the only thing that differentiates <laughs> them is essentially either the terroir. So let's say where certain things are grown, right? Let's say the type of things that they're aged in right? The, the barrels, right? So those, those right. will play a little bit of an influence, but eventually, essentially, you know, the Japanese whiskeys, as I said earlier, they take a lot of their skills or their growing techniques from Scotland. Yeah, okay. Right. And you know, when, when it comes to Irish whiskeys, I explained earlier that they go through like something in the process where Scotland does it twice and then they do it three times. So there's, there's a little bit of nuances that happen. Obviously, when you distill something more times, you will essentially clean out a lot of those impurities right. from that whiskey. But at the same time, now this is just my personal opinion, 
I feel as if you take away some of those flavors. So yes, do I like my whiskey only double distilled? For me, I prefer them double distilled as opposed to triple distilled only because I feel that triple distillation sometimes will take too much out. That being mm. said, I've had Irish whiskeys that are triple distilled and taste fantastic. So, okay. you know, it really comes down to the master blender or the master distiller. Okay. Okay. So there are people, that's their job is to blend and to distill, correct? Yes, like hardest it's a jobs master in the world. distiller and master yeah. blender, so they can take and choose. And so I also know that um, the even the color of the whiskey also depends, right, on that. You were saying how it's grown, the type of water, um, all these things affect the different tastes and whether you you said you know the distillation if it's um, a cleaner or lighter versus heavier. Is that even a right word to use it? Heavier versus lighter or no? Uh, I would just say, you know, as, as I said, triple distillation will clear out some of those, you know, okay. some of those impurities, right? So as go some of the impurities also do some of the flavors. So I, I feel as mm. if like do that, sometimes it's almost too clean, but you know, when it comes to those colors, the casts have a lot of influence on the colors. There are, right. most of the time, it's always ex-bourbon. So they buy bourbon casks, okay. used bourbon casks from America. That's what they age mm -hmm. whiskey in. Other mm -hmm. times, they'll age it in bourbon, and then they'll finish it, or what they call in. mature it, in a wine cask or a sherry cask. Uh, yes. Some of the whiskey that we have today are actually sherry matured or a sherry influence. So you'll notice yes. that there's a little bit of a color difference between them. Yes, so I will confess my favorite usually comes from a sherry cask. I like the sh the the whiskeys that are aged in the or matured in the sherry cask. So that's just for anyone else out there who wants to know. Also, okay, I think we have a winner. It wasn't very difficult, um, and I know this friend of mine also loves to tune in. I see some of our regular followers like Chris and Leslie. I see also Faye, Aileen. You guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for, of course, trying to win. But our winner this time is Jing Domingo. Jing, congratulations, you won again. You really do have lightning fast fingers. Congratulations, you will be getting, I'll show you guys what's inside now, okay? Um, so you'll be getting uh, three different whiskeys and this is what Pia and I will be tasting today with Chris as well as a chocolate bar and you'll get some lechon also from Lechoneria Belly. Um, pH, which you guys can check them out. It's really the yummiest lechon belly I've ever had. I do love lechon belly. Um, okay, so we said earlier that we will be showing you, of course, how to make drinks and how to make mixed drinks um, with whiskey so that um, you can see it's not, you don't just have to drink it neat. Um, you don't have just have to drink it on the rocks. You can make it in a mixed drink and you can pair it with our favorite Pinoy foods. So joining us for this segment with over 20 years experience in the F&B industry, we have mixologist Kath Eckstein. Hey Kath, welcome. Hi, hi Michelle, hi Pia, and hi Chris. Thanks for having me today. We're so glad that you're joining us today and we're so <laughs> glad that you also showed us how to make some fun drinks. Um, so, okay, we visited with Kath last week uh, in the Spirits Library where she showed us different ways she formulates drinks. And actually we presented um, Kath, like Kath, this is our menu, this is our tasting menu. How would you come up with a drink that complements this food? So Kath, should we roll the video? Sure, sure, let's roll okay. it. <laughs> So this first drink is called Hasmina, 
and um, I know that we used all the drinks. We used uh, famous grouse, right? Yes, that's correct. I believe that uh, famous grouse is a really great whiskey to mix in cocktails with. Um, I want people to know that. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of whiskey aficionados that would say, "Oh my God, Kath, why would you mix whiskey and put it in a cocktail?" But you know, it really, as Chris said already, it's all about preference. Not everybody wants to drink their whiskey neat. So you know, er people love sweet cocktails or they like sour cocktails, and why not? Everyone should be included. You know, having a nice meal and enjoying a cocktail, and if you just love the 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 traits and the the tasting notes of whiskey why not have it in a cocktail as well so I, in this cocktail i i used some jasmine syrup i used some calamansi juice which i think will pair really really well with the mussels that you that you made today i believe yes have, and then i added some oysters oh sorry oysters yes that's okay forgive me. that's okay Yes, and uh, I also added some aver Averna, which has some uh -huh. lovely sage and rosemary notes to it, and I just thought it really go go really really well with the first dish being presented today. So, right, and I remember you sharing when we were talking about Averna, similar to what Chris was talking about earlier when whiskey was um, first formulated to kind of be medicinal. You said that Averna was an older, yes. um, yeah, tell us about that. So it's kind of, it's like the same there. Yes, actually uh, Averna is a, is a digestive, which is actually eaten after a meal. It's really classified mm -hmm. that way, but I chose to uh, use it in the beginning of, you know, our, our food series here today, because I just think it has lovely notes in it and it's an Italian liqueur. Uh, a liqueur is something that's very, su it's sweet with some sugar in a li uh, liquor base. And it just has all these lovely medicinal, it really was used for digesting your system because it has all these herbs and uh, some spices and it's supposed to aid in your digestion. So that's why it's called a digestive. Perfect. Um, yes. So, okay. I think we're ready. Now, we saw the drink, the Hasmina that you put together, um, and it had um, jasmine and um, all these other flavors, no, that you were the jasmine simple syrup and the other things that we put into that drink to make it kind of pair with our seafood. So we're Correct. actually pairing with oysters today, um, but you could pair this with mussels. Today we have oysters. Um, from Crystal Bay and uh, it's called the Kilowin Experience. So we actually have fresh oysters and we also have Kilowin, which I think goes well with what we paired it first. Um, Chris, do you wanna tell us about what we're pairing with uh, the mussels first as I pour it out? So Pia, if you have yours and you wanna pour it out already. So guys, I love that it's just perfect. It's, it's a, so perfect it's for us to have. No, it's not. Is, it, is it Chris? Is this is how? Is Chris? Is that's, this how? Uh, the... That's that's only a thirty ml. I mean, obviously, <laughs> the more the merrier, right? But in our situation, we want to make sure that it, it's it's only four in the afternoon, so we don't want to get people too uh, <laughs> too kind of messed up. But um, right. Getting back to what Michelle was talking about, so we decided as as with Kathy, we we had discussed this. When it comes to whiskey and food pairing, you essentially want to do what's known as complementary or contrasting flavor, right? And right. you basically want to create balance when it comes down to flavors. So we went with the Highland Park 12. The Highland Park 12 is a single malt from the island of Orkney. Now, Orkney is located in the island region of Scotland. So if you look at the map, there are a little bit of those kind of like it's almost like the Philippines where, you know, you'll see some little, little islands kind of like all huddled together in the middle of the ocean. That's where Orkney is, right? And okay. they say that when it comes to scotch that's produced there, it has a little bit of a grimy kind of like a okay. seawater salty influence, 
obviously from okay. they say that from the sea breeze that's what uh, that's what adds to it i'm not too sure but that's what they say so we'll, we'll take their word for it correct okay now, when it comes to this whiskey we wanted to basically pair the salinity of the oyster to some mm -hmm. of the seaweed notes that this whiskey has now this whiskey okay. is lightly peated so there's a little bit of peat in there but you'll barely notice it because this yeah. is also matured in sherry casks. So, right. oh, you know, so it, it, has, good it has like the best of both worlds, right? Exactly. So when it comes to oysters, you want to just basically take a little bit of the whiskey, pour it onto the oyster, and then just have that in one gulp. And then see those the salinity, those flavors of the oyster, that, that seawater oyster flavor, go in with the sherry and a little bit of that grininess from the Highland Park as well. And it should create a nice kind of balance of flavor onto the palate. Go ahead and try that out, Michelle. Let me know what you uh, think. Okay, so do you want us to try the whiskey? I already put my little bit of whiskey in my oyster shell. Perfect. Do you want us to try the whiskey first and then, or just try the oyster first? Well, let's go ahead and try the whiskey. Now, what maybe, okay. Michelle, the fact that you're not too fond of peated whiskeys is because obviously the smell can be a little bit of, you know, it, it might take a little bit of getting used to. But essentially, I've noticed that people in general are a little bit, uh, they're not quite sure on how to drink whiskey properly. Now, the first thing you want to do is you always want to just nose it. So you want to smell it, but you don't want to shove your nose in there like wine. Wine's only around 13% alcohol, so it's easier on the nostrils. Whiskey yeah. is minimum of 40. 40. So you don't want right. to wanna go in gung-ho. Just go start with maybe four inches away and slowly okay. get those notes. After you get those notes, try to see what your memories or your brain unlocks. It's all about finding the flavors. You might smell calamansi. You might smell vanilla. You might smell dark fruits, cherries, things like that. Then you go in for a slow taste. Don't take too much. Just take a little bit. And then just let it kind of swallow it around or swirl it around the mouth a little bit before you, do the swallow, before you swallow it. And then try to get, once again, try to get whatever notes that your memories will give you. Slangeva. Try it. Try it. So it I really, it smells delicious. I smelled vanilla. Am I right in smelling vanilla? There was a there little bit of vanilla there. Yes, that's from the ex bourbon. Okay. Um, P, did you try it already? I, I like it. I like it. So I think I now found a mildly peaty. Scotch whiskey that I like. I'm glad to have helped. Cheers, thank salt. you. Yes, yeah, so you yes, exactly, Pia. Yeah. There's a little bit of salinity, some saltiness at the end, which is yeah. why we said it, it should go well with a little bit of the natural saltiness that a oyster has. I'm gonna put this first here. Mm. Put it here. Just mm, give it a nice little okay. Okay. Good okay, are you ready? Oh, you tried the oysters already? Wait, I'm gonna try mine too. I don't know you if know, I can do this. Air whiskey with food. This is the reason why I want to be part of this because mm. for me, novel idea. It's always been wine being paired with food, but never whiskey. So it's my first time. But well, so good. Yum. Okay, so actually, Chris, we approve. We love the oysters paired with the Highland Park 12. It's 12? Yes. yes. Park 12. Perfect. Okay, are you guys ready for us to give the audience another quiz the cook questions? Um, we'll give them a question. Oh, so Russell Patina thinks that whiskey and talaba is for the win. Yes, we agree. <laughs> Up here. Okay. With, um, <laughs> Raisin, also raisin for raisins. Interesting. Russell says whiskey's good with raisins. Hi, what? John. John Panetta says hello. Hey, bro. So that's either for you, Chris, or for Steve. <laughs> um, we have, uh, let's see, sharing what I know. Okay, for neat, someone is also sharing um, the different whiskeys that they like. 
Jing says uh, she likes whiskey and assortment of cheese, chocolate, and charcuterie. I agree. That's good with anything. Always. Here's our question, guys. I love um, that you guys are so interactive. And, of course, you want to win. I know you want to win the next one. Remember that we have three different whiskeys in your tasting set from Drambox and Single Malt PH. Um, single Malt Philippines. We also have Lechoneria. Guys, have you seen how big the lechon is back there? <laughs> you guys are getting one of those. Lechoneria yeah. Belly PH. And here, I'm just going to show you how big it is. I cannot wait. And how heavy it is. Ah. And then, guys, if you want to pair, look at how big this is. I am working oh. out to hold this. <laughs> right look look at all that lemongrass and so I'm, good you guys cut it with us with a pair of scissors yes that's the best way to cut it and then of course for us we like getting it for special occasions and birthdays and different fun things but if you wanted to order smaller ones you could do that too so they have like one kilo, two kilo, four kilo. And you can do that through their website. So perfect. Okay, we're ready for our next question. Um, remember the first person who is 18 years old and lives within Metro Manila can win this. You will win the lechon, the whiskey, and the chocolate. And you can go ahead and message Kilowin Experience for your own oysters if you want to replicate the whole tasting experience that Pia, Kath, and I are enjoy and Chris are enjoying now. Okay, what is the minimum age for Scotch whiskey to reach for it actually to be called whiskey? So there we go. We will we will See who answers first. And Steve can't join, right, Mish? <laughs> no, Steve can't join. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve, but you can try the Lechon and the oysters and the scotch that we sent over and the whiskey that we sent over today. Okay. I see Mark Simon Ping. He is here. Hi, Mark. Tyne. Um, Alden, Chris, hi guys. I love that you are. Oh, hi, Tita Bebot. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for tuning in. Guys, that's my Tita. Okay, William. Guys, I'm so excited. Wow, okay. The council has spoken. We have a winner. Pia, do you remember how long it has to age before it can be called whiskey? Yes, it's... We can give the answer. The answer now? It's yes. years. Yes, and John Pineda got that right. He was the first to answer, and he will be taking home his own dram box set with Lechoneria, Lechon Belly, uh -huh. and some dark chocolate. And again, John, you should order some um talaba fresh and frozen they have and they even have kilowin from kilowin experience guys i'm so excited we have another question for you before we taste our next course which actually is the lechon i'm so excited to taste the lechon okay so yeah. the next question um i'm going to share some of my talaba with my partner over here because he loves those too. All right, so the next question will be a fill in the blanks. And we mentioned this quite a few times, Chris and I, we were talking about that also. And um, So you guys will be able to answer this quickly, I think. Are you ready with your lightning fingers? Again, congratulations, John, Jing. I can't remember who the other two winners are already, um, but congratulations. Congratulations to all the winners who signed on and, of course, who are super game. Um, remember that the winners here have to be 18 years and older, and they have to live in Metro Manila. So here we go. Fill in the blank. Whiskey must have a minimum of blank ABV, which is the alcohol by volume, for it to be bottled and called whiskey, right? So... 
we have some things here. So guys, um, P, are you guys enjoying your talaba? Yes, I love how spicy it is. So I'm definitely eat offender of this. <laughs> it's so good, right? Guys, it yeah. comes really easily also. If you want to order from Kilowin Experience and you don't want to have to shop them yourself, you can order the jar. It comes yeah. and it's packed. It's already marinated, all natural ingredients going in here, vinegar, cucumbers, a little bit of spice. Um, not too spicy. You didn't find it too spicy, no? It's just perfect. Yes, it's perfect. And it goes well. So I would have never thought to put the I know. whiskey right in with it. So good. So good. Okay, let's see. Do we have a winner for Quiz the Cook question? Number four, it looks like we do. Oh, hi, Joanna. Joanna Gubis here. Hi. And Gemma, William, I love that you guys are all here. Medal, yes. <laughs> so Medal is saying um, that she's so amazed because the participants are psychic and they already know like what the questions will be. You know why, Medal? Because we're so um, collect with the important information that we give. Chris and I said the information like three or four times for each question, and I think they, they're on to us. They know that we're going to ask these questions. <laughs> so, you, Michelle, okay. If you looked at those questions, the last question was question number three, which was three years, and then this last one was question four, which is 40%. So I think we're giving away the answers within the questions themselves. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> Did it say the answer in the slides? Wait, I didn't see the slide. No, I no, no. Because the last question was uh, question number three was how many years does it take to be called Scotch? And that's three years. Right. And then okay. this last one was question number four what percentage? So it's 40%. Yeah. So the four is there as well. So if they're, if they're, oh. if they're, very complete, they can kind of get that. <laughs> You're on to us. Look at that. I didn't even realize that's a pattern. So funny. Okay. That's so funny. That's coincidence. Totally coincidence. I think that's like with the team in the back end and like how we think. Okay. So we will announce the winner. Are we ready? Yes. Roy. Arnuko, Arnuko, did I say that right? How would we say that name, Arnuko? Arnuko is the only way to say it. All right. If you perfect. want to go Italian, Arnuko. Arnuko. Well, I am Italian, Chris, so we could. <laughs> okay, let's bring Kath back so she can tell us. Congratulations, Roy. Enjoy your whiskey. I hope you're 18 and you live within Metro Manila. Kat, welcome back. Let's talk about Under the Mango Tree. So we will roll this video. <coughs> So this one, I will confess, it was my favorite of all the three drinks that you mixed for us. Um, Thank you so much. And it's much. again using, <laughs> it's using the same famous grouse, correct? Yes, correct. And this okay, time, I'll, I'm, I thought this would be really perfect with the lechon belly because I'm using spicy mango uh, syrup and some lemon juice. And right there, I'm using some celery bitters. And as you can see, a lot of people, when they read um, a recipe to make a cocktail, a dash really is that aggressive. You have to dash it in, into your drink. Not, it's not a drop, but it's a dash. Right. Yeah, so that's really the correct way to put in a dash of your favorite bitters. And uh, I'm just shaking it up here just a little bit to incorporate all the ingredients together. Then I chose a, a tall glass. And I'm topping it off with some nice uh, tonic water here. And then we're just going to 
mix it up a little bit, you know, uh, bring the ingredients to the top. And you can add your favorite metal straw here. And um, I just added a nice garnish here to make it look really pretty and summery and delicious. And it, a garnish is also a way of letting a person know what's in your drink. Basically, it's you're saying that yes, we did use lemon juice, and that's why we're ah. using this garnish. Ah, so yes. that is actually a little clue for all of us who didn't know that mixologists will always let you know what's inside based on the garnish. Okay, I yes. loved that drink because it felt light and fruity. The spice was just like a little bit on the back of my tongue. It wasn't super. Um, spicy, but I think it would go perfect with our lechon belly. So I will try and recreate that myself. <laughs> yeah, my question. Are yeah. you guys ready? Go. Yes. Ask, how do you make stuff uh, bitters and uh, like that sour mango uh, juice that you used? Because I would love to recreate that at home, but I just don't have stuff like the bitters and all that well it's yeah. really you, making a cocktail at home is really easy it's simple and it shouldn't be as intimidating as a lot of mixologists make it look intimidating but mm -hmm. i believe that cocktails need to have a balance a good balance of mm -hmm. ingredients so mm -hmm. if you, you the, for me there's always three main things that you should have and that's mm -hmm. a base spirit mm -hmm. uh, a sour uh, note to it so you can have you can add calamansi juice or lemon juice or even vinegar which a lot of people would say are you crazy Kath no that's that's a little bit but it does add that sour element that you're looking for and then a sweet uh, a sweet element in your cocktail and it would and depending on your preference, if you like it sweeter, then add a little bit more syrup to your cocktail. Right. If you like it sour, like me, I like it more on the, uh, you know, more citrus and more acidic, then I add a little bit more uh, lemon juice. And then there you have it. You have an instant cocktail. And, right. you know, you can always use a lot of uh, things that are lying around the house. You can use jam. You can use... Mm. Um, yeah, you can use jams. Uh, if you have uh, juice mm -hmm. in your in your fridge, that's already classified as something sweet. sweet. So right. yeah, it's already your sweet element there. Right. And, right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do yeah. you what do you, you have? Um, can stevia cut it or not quite? Mm. Keto. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yes, why not? There's actually a lot of sugar-free syrups in the market. You yeah, can great. just look it up. And I know there are certain brands out there that right. you can buy. I mean, if you can find the uh, zero sugar equivalent for your, you know, syrups for your coffee, it will, it's why, exactly why the not? same for your cocktails as well. Why not? For and your drink. Sure, if, you, if you're really watching your weight, then by all means, that's okay. We all Fantastic. deserve to enjoy a cocktail. <laughs> we do. And on that note, yeah. Kat, please stay on camera with us while we taste lechon and the next yes. whiskey, which I am actually quite, I favored this one a little bit. I am a Macallan girl. So we can ask um, Chris to walk us through this tasting. And let's see if Chris is still here. I'm sure he is. There, so Kat, please stay on because I know you have lechon too that you can taste with us as well. Chris, let's do this one um, and then we can get on to our dessert. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so uh, basically as, we, as I had discussed with Kat as far as our process when it came to this, when you talk about this lechon belly, the, the flavors of the lemongrass, the garlic, the onions, all those savory kind of umami-ish type flavors that go into making that lechon belly from lechoneria, which is absolutely delicious, by the way. It, it's got some of the finest flavors that I've ever had when it came to a lechon belly. Those flavors tend to, wow. to, to be <clears throat> kind of, uh, they have a lot of oils on them, so they have like the, the saltiness, and as I said, the umami, the savoriness. So we went with the Macallan 12 Fine Oak because this whiskey in itself has a lot of those fruity type flavors, 
Now, <clears throat> you want, when you when you're eating something like a lechon belly, you want a whiskey or a drink that has a little bit of acid or a little bit of brighter notes to kind of cut through that fat, right? And that's that's basically where we're doing a contrast of flavors. So maybe if you went with like a heavier and oakier whiskey, it might be a little bit too much because you know the term nakaka umai might might actually happen. So you know you want to go with something like this where it has a lot more fruitier, lighter notes to kind of help cut through that fatty deliciousness that the lechon belly has. So let's uh, go in for a taste, slangeva. So if you're at home trying this this lechon, I would. Go with the whiskey first, just get it a little bit on your tongue, kind of give yourself the flavors, then have some of the lechon, and then drink another sip of the whiskey. So, Slanjava. Slanjay. Mmm, wow. That yes, the McCollum 12 Fine Oak. Once again, a very delicious whiskey from Edrington. Uh, it is available in in a lot of uh, a lot of the markets that you can buy it here, but as I said, this whiskey has that acidity to it that can help cut through the the flavor, the savoriness of that lechon belly. So let me know what you guys think. I love it. Um, it's a little bit. Oh, there we are. Um, I definitely taste the difference uh, when I compare it to my sherry cask that I usually enjoy. It's um, it's a little bit richer, no? So I'm not sure if I know what I'm smelling. How about you, Cass? Well, there's definitely some vanilla notes in there, but mm -hmm. it has all the elements you need to cut the fattiness of the lechon belly. Mm -hmm. And while I'm on air, I just want to say hi to my brother. He's watching, Hans. He is the brand hi, advocate Hans. for Macallan. So I'm just going to wow. say hi. Cheers. <laughs> hi to my <laughs> brother, Hans. Hi, Hans. Yes. Yes. So he's the brand advocate for Macallan. So he has nothing but praises for, you know, the, the Macallan. And um, he, sorry, we're, we're tasting Highland Park right now. But um, I do know there's a certain whiskey expert who says that they, this is the whiskey they would take on the, the deserted island with them. <laughs> this is their whiskey of choice to take on a desert. If they had only one whiskey to, whiskey to choose to bring to a deserted island, this would be it. So. Macallan. No, it's sorry. So the, do... the, high, the Highland Park. <clears throat> oh. Ooh. The Highland we had with the oysters. I think oh, right. we're trying the Sorry. Macallan now. That's yes, okay. That's right. I want to show you guys. Um, I had I almost polished this off. I kept just a little bit so I could show you. This is my fave. A little back further. Macallan. I believe this that's the yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, we can so tell it's your favorite. favorite. It's almost <laughs> gone. <laughs> it's gone. I just saved it for a little bit when I was testing the oysters last night. <laughs> you caught me. You caught me, Cass. <laughs> okay. So I love that this one goes deliciously with the Lechoneria Lechon Belly. So let me just tell you really quickly about the Lechon Belly before we go on to the last few questions and then we'll wrap up. Um, Lechoneria is located also in Metro Manila. They are a family-owned business. I love that they have even um, alternatives. They know they've, they, they've pivoted so quickly um, when it came to providing mm -hmm. good food for all the celebrations and fiestas that we always look for lechon um, for, right? Birthdays and New Year's. This is our standard. We get it for New Year's Eve now. Um, but it's so good. You can have the big slab. You can have it packed for the office. You know, if you or small gatherings and send them out to everybody, it's really delicious, really easy, of course, because you don't have to do anything but order. And I am all about making life easier in the kitchen. You guys know that um, anything to make my life easier in the kitchen and serving the family, 
makes everyone happy, especially me. So here are the next quiz the cook questions. How do you guys like the lechoneria while we are enjoying that? Why don't you tell me about what you think? And we're gonna ask our viewers, are you ready? <clears throat> Let's see, we have comments. Lechon Belly, Gemma thinks Lechon Belly is love. Anais Bolina, she's sad because she doesn't have Lechon Belly to enjoy. <laughs> um, Gemma, okay, Lechon is super yummy, guys. I'd love to hear where you're coming in from too. So when you type in your answer, why don't you tell us where you're, where you are? I know probably everybody who's trying to win the, the, um, the prizes is from Metro Manila, but I'd also like to hear where everybody else is from. We've had some people tune in from Japan and Iloilo, and I think we even had some guests last week tune in from Europe. So tell me where you are. Ella is ready. They are ready. Here's the question. How many steps are there in whiskey production? You don't have to enumerate. The next one might be a little bit harder for you guys. And I don't know. Okay, noted, noted on how many steps. Kevin Kyle Asunshan says, wow, Chris is such an amazing guy. I would definitely go to him for a recommendation on whiskey. Guess what, Kevin? I would too. Okay, it looks like we have a winner. Okay, Cyrus even named them. Wow, good job. Pepper is there. Guys, you are so fast. I do think we have the first winner. I will announce, okay, final answer, guys, final answer for, okay, Mark Ebo, congratulations, you answered correctly with six steps, um, six steps in our quiz the cook question. Guys, what do you think of the lechoneria? It's so you're good. Tasting? I love that it's so tasty, so it even needs salt. And right? I hate it when I order one and then the skin is not crunchy, but this one is definitely super crunchy. Super. Then, Can I do a little ASMR? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said I would never do ASMR. <laughs> It's so crunchy, guys. Did you did you like heat it up so that it's crunchy? It's so yummy. Yeah, I'm I'm okay, so surprised guys. because they sent me the whole lechon belly, and you know I live quite far, but it yes. was so uh, juicy, and the skin was still really crispy, and it was still warm. So I was and very, very impressed. Tender. Yes. Right. Yeah, and and the 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 meat is also tender and like Pia said, very flavorful. Okay, guys, we have one last <clears throat> question, um, and I know I, I hope you guys will get this. Uh, again, let's thank Lechoneria, Lechon Belly, for um, providing us with such delicious pe food pairing, and um, of course, Kilowin. Um, the Kilowin Experience, who provided today, we have some oysters, which you guys can order from them, shocked and frozen, and sometimes they even have fresh, which is what I ordered for um, yesterday and today. <laughs> and then we even have the Kilowin, too. So chocolate is next, but before we taste our chocolate and our last whiskey, let's try and remember the three drinks that Cass prepared for us. So here's the question. What three drinks did Kath Eckstein prepare for us during her mixology videos? <gasps> Wait, did we show the last video? Oh, no. Not yet. We, we haven't not. showed it yet. <clears throat> Let's show it now, guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you.
So this cocktail is called the Lux Flyer, and uh, it's my version of, of an aviation, which is a classic cocktail that uses uh, Luxardo. It's a um, maraschino cherry liqueur, which I am adding right here in a mixing glass. And I believe I've added the famous grouse already in the glass. And here I'm just adding just a touch of um, some creme de menthe. So just that nice uh, touch of mintiness that would I thought that would go really well with our chocolate. And I'm now adding some plum and root bitters in the glass with some ice. And here I'm just mixing and uh, just incorporating the, the flavors together and making the cocktail nice and chilled. And so I'm just now empty it, emptying it into a lovely punch glass here just because I think it looks so pretty. And I'm adding, yes, the some orange zest in the cocktail. And there you go. I think it goes really well with our chocolate today. I was going to ask about that. Is there like a specific glass that we should drink uh, whiskeys from? Or should we just choose like mm. cat what looks pretty? Is it like wine, Chris, that you have to choose a specific glass for it to aerate it or whatever? That's a great question, Pia. Um, I always say that the first important thing about the glass is that it's clean, right? <laughs> um, but then it comes to it comes down to what are you trying it for? Are you trying to nose and taste and get to know a brand new whiskey that you've never had before? If you are in those situations, as Kath was showing earlier, I would use something known as a Glen Carn or a what they call a tulip glass. Now. These glasses are basically designed for nosing because as you can see, they have a little bit of a wider bottom and as it goes up to the top, it gets narrow. So what happens is those vapors tend to kind of collect right at the top part and you're able to get a lot more concentrated no uh, sense out of those no out of your nose. So that's why if you're trying to nose or taste a whiskey like wine, you want something that has that forces a lot of those flavors or those vapors to come up. If you look at your typical Cabernet glass or even your white wine glass, it kind of has that same concept where it's a little bit wider in the middle and it goes a little bit more narrow at the top. Now, yes, there are times that you want to aerate it. You want to let it breathe. And I would do the same thing for whiskey. When you first open a bottle of whiskey, it's always good to pour it in and just let it breathe for a little bit. People will say that you want to let it breathe one minute for each year that's on the bottle. So let's say as uh, Michelle's oh. favorite, Calen 12. 12. You want to let yes. that breathe for 12 minutes. Wow. I love whiskey way too much that I don't let it breathe that long. Um, <laughs> I'll pour it in and then I'll, I'll let it sit there for, <laughs> for a few minutes just to kind of like let it collect. Maybe at times I'll put like coaster on top of it just to kind of collect those vapors in a little bit more. And then I'll go in for my experience. But, but absolutely right. When you, if you just want to have a regular, if you've had a whiskey before and it's warm outside and you want it on the rocks, a rocks glass is completely fine. Uh, any, or if you want to have a highball where you pour whiskey into a, a, a tall glass, kind of like so, right. and then you fill right. it up with soda water. So it all depends on your mood. As I said, for me, and as you as well, Pia, I know you like drinking whiskeys neat. So for me, the best way to drink whiskey neat is through something like this and it, it you know Perfect. you get to witness the whole experience great yes nice so we Thanks. just we need the correct barware right p we need stemware barware for each of our different yep. spirits that we want to enjoy need to buy some of those <laughs> that'll be we for another episode <laughs> <laughs> right you guys can see i'm already red and i've only had a little sip of each <laughs> of each 30 ml. Okay, so um, we are ready for our question. I'm sorry, guys, if you did answer, we are asking the question now. Ready, set, go. What are the three drinks that Cass Eckstein prepared? So uh, that starts. We showed, we started that. So let's see who's the. 
I can't believe you guys, the comments, they started already so fast. Okay, I'm going to leave this answer. I'm sorry that I asked the question before showing the third video cast. But this it's shows okay. why this shows why hosts should not enjoy whiskey at the <laughs> same time. Okay, we have a winner. Um, before I announce the winner, Cass, do you want to do you want to tell us the three drinks that you named? Right. So the first one is called Hasmina. The second one is called Under the Mango Tree. And the third is called the Lux Flyer. Okay. I hope you guys got it correct. <laughs> so many of them did already. We are waiting for the council the council um for what answer was after I gave the go signal because everybody answered prior to that. And I believe the winner right. there is Genevieve. So Genevieve Camille Crudo, you are the winner of the last kit. Congratulations. You. you will be receiving a dram box with three, um, three different whiskeys to try and while they get while the back end while the team gets in contact with you we're going to try our last whiskey which is glen rock with our dark chocolate so chris let's let's wrap this one glen right. yes yeah. glen rothes so glen rothes is a sister company of mccallan obviously all under the Edrington name. Now, when it comes to Glen Rothes, this is also a whiskey that's matured in sherry casks. So it, it's gonna have a lot of ah. those bright kind of red, dark, dark fruit notes, but at the same time, some bright citrus as well. So we mm -hmm. went with this with dark chocolate because it's able to cut through some of that bitterness that a lot of dark chocolates have. When it comes to dark chocolate tasting, you don't want to just chew the dark chocolate like you're you're chewing on a Snickers bar. You know, you, you want to you want to take a small piece of the dark chocolate and essentially even even something as small as like so and you just want to like let it melt on your tongue. Now as it melts, your it'll it'll kind of unravel all the layers of flavors that it actually has from the cocoa to the espresso to the vanilla notes and then as you can see, a lot of those notes are very hearty notes, very flavorful. Mm. The Glen Rothis, after you, after the chocolate melts, then take a sip of that Glen Rothis and let that sherry influence kind of cut through some of that chocolate and get okay. you to that balance that what we're looking for. Try. Mm. Mm. Yum. Mm. I love that. So, so it's, it's very different from chewing the chocolate. If you chew the chocolate and you leave some of those tidbits of chocolate in your mouth and then you drink the whiskey, it might not balance as well. But if you let the chocolate melt and just take your time with it, as I said, tasting is all about the experience. So just let it unravel itself, let it melt, let it smooth out, and then go ahead for a sip of that whiskey. Once again, don't go too much maybe take a small little 2 ml, 3 ml sip, and then just let the flavors marry together and then go in for that finish. That's a good word, Chris, marinate. Marinate in your mouth. <laughs> delicious. Super, super. Chris, now the, the, the higher the percentage, the more bitter the chocolate. So this one that we're yeah. having tonight is, I believe, 64. So, mm -hmm. yeah, 64. So it's not the most bitter or heaviest of chocolates. Dark chocolate is actually what they recommend for you to cleanse your palate if you're doing a whiskey tasting. So say you're oh. having four or five different whiskeys, along with black you know, normal black, unsugared, uns uns you know, unsweetened coffee, you can also have a small piece of 90% dark chocolate and that'll help cleanse that palate out. 
And obviously, I was actually, yeah, I was actually going to ask that question. What do you cleanse in between when you're actually tasting the whiskeys? <clears throat> so dark chocolate. I'm, I'm perfect for that because I love dark chocolate. And obviously now everybody also knows that I love whiskey. And I know that our viewers do as well. Chris, this has been amazing. Um, the learning experience that we have all had with the whiskey and with the drink. So, guys, if you do want the, the recipes for the drinks that Mixologist Kath made, you can visit the column on Thursday. There will be recipe cards for each of the whiskeys, as well as how to make a mignonette, mignonette sauce for the oysters that we um, enjoyed today. But, okay, you can catch the replays of this episode if you want to join us again and learn more about whiskey and maybe have fun there, seeing how we had fun tasting with all of the different Filipino foods, our scotch whiskey, um, going perfectly with oysters and talaba, our talaba, and also with our lechon belly, and of course with our dark chocolate, which is proudly Pinoy. Um, Pinoy food at its best, Pinoy eats with whiskey. You can tune in August 7th and August 8th at 5 p.m. I will be there to live comment. And of course, we also want to know what you guys want to learn about. Please give us any idea, like comment down below and let us know because we like to know what you want to learn about, too, so we can provide that experience for you. Um, Kath, if someone wants to follow you and find you on social media, where can they find you? Oh, they can find me on Facebook. Um, my, my social media handle is Kath Eckstein. And also on Instagram, where I really do post a lot of my recipes, uh, what I'm doing, um, uh, Career wise, they can follow me on Instagram, which is at Kath Eckstein, which you see in the bottom here. And that's it. You can contact Perfect. me there as well. Perfect. Um, Chris, yes. if they want to learn more about uh, whiskey and how to, you know, get involved and attend one of your whiskey tastings through Drambox or Single Malt Philippines, where can everyone find you? Absolutely. Well, we are available on IG and on Facebook as well under Drambox PH. We are do we are doing right now in the process of doing a lot of obviously because we're we're about to go into another lockdown. We have been doing so many of these virtual tastings. We customize classes for people, corporations, what have you, and for, for parties. So that's what we've been doing. We, we do these tastings and spe specifically customize everything for your target market. So you can go check us out on, on our social media, on IG, and on Facebook at Drambox PH. Fantastic. And of course, Pia, please tell everyone if they would like to follow you on social media, how they can find you as well. Oh, great. Thanks. Um, they can follow me on Instagram at Pia Guanyo underscore Mango and my YouTube channel, uh, Pia Guanyo. Right. So thanks for having me. This is so informative and delicious. <laughs> Thank you we'll so much. Touch, I think Chris. you also have a new show, right? You have a new show also coming up? A morning yes, show? Yes. Uh, I'm going to be in a new morning show soon, but to the lockdown will push the launch date. Um, okay. Yeah, we're, we, we're targeting to launch on the 23rd of August. Uh, it's a okay. 6 to 8 a.m. morning show, and it's called Ada Umaga on Net 20. And I'm still on Eat Fan Me there. Thanks, man. Fantastic. Thanks, Thank me. You. I'm so glad. Thanks, Steve. Also, Nino says hello to Steve, and he can't wait till we can also enjoy whiskey together when it's safe and better for everyone out to go outside. Okay, so guys, thanks again for joining me here in the kitchen. You can come back again in two weeks. Same bat time, same bat channel, four o'clock on Tuesday. We will be learning about something new, of course. And if you'd like to share with us what you'd like to learn about, please leave it in the comments section below. See you this Saturday and Sunday for the replays. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.